the Joe Rogan experience? It's been a while. It's been... 10 years? No, more than that. Really? 2007, I moved out of LA. Wow. Damn. It's weird. I I've talked about you in the podcast several times, though. You know what? Uh, I never listened to the po- podcast until recently. Um, someone told me the second time you said, I think three times you've mentioned me. Probably. Yoga Ray. Yoga Ray. And all these <laughs> kids are contacting me. They mentioned Ray, Yoga Ray on the show. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was cool. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, too, yeah. man. I, I always thought, truthfully, I always thought Joe Rogan's going to do something good. I Honestly, I can tell you that. And it, it may be embarrassing to say, but I'm, what, I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. I hope, that's I hope very you don't nice. mind me saying no, that. I'm proud of all you've done. Thank you. That's very nice. That's a funny thing to say, though. And you've had great, just a Joe Rogan time, you've had done some great stuff. First of all, stand-up comedian. That's a, that's a great gig. It's a fun gig. It's a great gig. And if I could pick a second thing besides stand-up comedian, it'd be the announcer. I wouldn't want to be in the UFC, even if I was good, because you get pounded on, and it's a tough job. <laughs> right? Yeah, for That's sure. why, you know, went to Thailand, see those kids fight. They're mm-hmm. retired at 21. Yeah, they get beat up. They get beat up, bad. Yeah. It's but to be an announcer rare. of the UFC, and you're also skilled at the stuff. Most people think the announcers aren't so skilled sometimes. You're very skilled. I just remember rolling around with you. Yeah. Those were some of the greatest memories of my time in L.A. is when Eddie opened 10th Planet. Yeah, we had a lot of fun, man. I mean, we it was such a, a special, training. interesting time of jiu-jitsu, I think, that it was going to no, no gi. There's this mm-hmm. demographic of jiu-jitsu guys who didn't want to wear a gi anymore. Yeah. Well, it was a lot of people wanted to learn things that would transition directly into MMA and to not have the clothes to grab onto. It changed the grips. And Eddie was one of the very first to really, truly concentrate on using wrestling grips, gable grips, over-unders, things along those lines. And then the other people were still really clinging to the gi. He was like a... uh, And I think the thing that I was attracted to about the ultimate fighting, when I first saw... I think the first one I saw was two you know, UFC 2. And I was like, oh man, this is, and you watch those Gracie in action videos. It's Mm -hmm. like, yeah, this is real stuff. I want to learn real stuff. Yeah. And so I started even noticing in my gi game, I just played open guard and I was lackadaisical and I'd always have to tell the guys, hey, do me a favor, just try to slap me because this is getting a little (laughs) unreal. I don't want to, I want a real life situation. Right. (laughs) And I'm figuring, okay, I don't want to get, by the way, I don't want to get caught up in the gi, no gi thing right now. But I always felt like, you know, real practical fighting. The guy may not be wearing a tuxedo. I think both are good because, like, you live in New York. New York gets cold. If you get into a scuffle with someone, I hope you never would do, but if you did <laughs> and he was wearing a jacket like yours, you could manipulate him with that jacket and they really probably wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. You know, this is a real benefit to, like, being a judo player if someone has a winter coat on. Yeah. Like, if you had a fight with Caro <laughs> Parisian or Ronda Rousey or someone like that, and they, they're wearing a, a winter coat, they'll fuck you up. <laughs> you know? They just grab that thing. <laughs> Boom! Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I learned that way. Yeah. It's a good way to learn. It's good. It's yeah. good for defense, too, because the gi keeps you from just yanking out of stuff and exploding out of things. You have to be very patient. You have to be. Yeah. You have to use correct technique. Anyway, it was appreciation, and it was one of my biggest lamentations of moving away was not to be around that whole posse. And then I never expected it to get as big as it did. I know. It's crazy, It's unbelievable, right? because back then it was like the seed. I used to bring my... My big kids, who are big now, I used to bring them, and they used to just box. We used to do it at... Uh, Legends. No, before Legends. Oh, Bomb Squad. At the Bomb Squad. Oh, Remember wow. That? That's crazy. That's old school, old school. Yeah. That's 2000, what, two? Somewhere around yeah, there? Yeah, it was cool. It was a great yeah. time. I had just got my purple. I was super excited, and then Eddie just got his black. He got his brown and his black super quick. Yeah, well, that? he got his brown, and then he beat Hoyler, and then he got his black. Yeah, I was there that day. Yeah, that was crazy. It, it was, when John Jacques took it off his back. Unbelievable. <laughs> heavy. That was heavy. Yeah. It was a good place to be at a good time. It was. It's like when you look back at those times, it's an, it was an interesting era. It was an interesting era for us as humans. It was an interesting era for martial arts. There was a lot going on. And that 10th planet was really a, a hub of exciting innovation. And it still is. But, I mean, back then it was this really unique thing, this this completely 
nogi branch of jujitsu that's directly connected to Junjak Machado, which is a totally very legit. conservative, legit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Junjak yeah. was is. I mean, still. I was so I'm always impressed with him too. He still rolls, man. He's <laughs> my age, and he doesn't get injured. Like he he might have like a little tweak here and there, but he's so intelligent and he's so technical and he's just so good. That was. I, I'm saying was only because I'm not there anymore. But when I was going there, I was like, this is such an amazing place, John Jacques Academy. The quality of fighters you would get there. Yeah. Jiu- I mean, that was also at a time where there was no jiu-jitsu in America. I mean, it was you have to travel yeah, to get to a jiu jitsu school. Yeah. You have to find you have to be into it and go somewhere. And um to have that many black belts at a school. Mm-hmm. That was like unheard of. In yeah, I remember schools. I was in his class one day and there was like 11 black belts. I was like, this is crazy. And it wasn't like that back no, then. No. There very, was a random unusual. rogue black belt somewhere in San, yep. you know, somewhere in Portland or something <laughs> yep. like that. Yep. You had to find them. It was a lot of purple belts teaching schools and blue belts teaching schools in some places even. That was a great time to get into jiu-jitsu also. Oh, yeah. Like I went, I started with Henzo in, in New, New York. York. Yeah. I went there the day that, uh, Matt Sarah got his purple belt. Wow, that's crazy! Isn't that crazy? It was like it was, it was, it was such a cool, interesting time in jujitsu. Yeah. That place is still the top place in the world. It's pretty impressive, and yeah. Hens was such a great guy too. He's the best. He's so that's nice. Sweet. I gave him a CD of my band, uh, just as a gift. I just met him, and he gave me a Krugen gi. Wow. Yeah. That's legit. It was super legit. Kr- Krugens That's, was the, the gi back then. That was then. the gi. Yeah. If you had a Krugens, like, ooh. <laughs> you know? It was a fair trade. I wasn't a trade. I just wanted to give him a gift, and he just, like, without thinking, just threw it back at me. Wow. He, he had a great attitude. Well, he still does. He's mm. so loved. That guy said, I mean, that's one of the really nice things about jujitsu is the camaraderie and the friendship. It's like, it's very different than, I always compare it to other martial arts in that the problem with striking martial arts is that you hurt each other all the time. You never develop the sort of closeness that you do with jujitsu because you're always trying to kick each other's fucking heads off. (laughs) 